as you might know, there's a lot of uh, pieces out there that you can learn about, uh, you know, B2C products, right? You can learn about, okay, how do you uh, reach out to the millennials or how do you reach out to the consumers out there, uh, the millions of them out there, right? But how do you uh, actually talk to enterprises? Uh, if you look at the market opportunity, it's about six, it's going to be about $665 billion for digital transformation by 2023, right? So we, uh, for, for that to happen, um, obviously, uh, there's a huge market for annual uh, SaaS kind of products that is just waiting to be taken over, right? There is uh, pieces around accounting, there's pieces around optimization, there's piece, pieces around cloud and AI, and there's so much more to the enterprise story uh, than meets the eye. So there is definitely a lot of opportunity there and, and, uh, you know, and for the taking. So definitely, you know, that's something that uh, we need to pay attention to from that perspective. So what I want to talk to you today was how are B2B and B2C similar? Right, what makes them uh, look similar, but how they are significantly different from each other. Uh, what an enterprise organization, so you might have uh, pieces that you uh, sell to a regular small and medium business, but how is an enterprise different? And uh, finally, uh, I'll kind of, as we talk through it, I'll talk through about uh, the so solution piece. How do we actually uh, build for an enterprise uh, B2B product, right? Uh, so uh, does uh, you know there are like a few people joined uh, us a little bit? Yeah. Hey. Um, so just wanted to understand if uh, how many of you have actually uh, worked in a B two B kind of environment or uh, right uh, and kind of uh, looking to see you know, what what needs to get done there. So feel free to pepper me with questions because you know we have a little bit of time and we have enough uh, you know personal uh, space here to kind of talk to, talk to everybody. Uh, so how, how is B2B and B2C similar? The big thing about that is that the product really needs to solve your customer's problem today, right? So if it doesn't solve it, it, it really isn't uh, useful to the customer, then it's not gonna work. So you still have to, in the B2B space, you still have to understand who your user is, you still have to understand what your market is, you have to understand what their pain points are, and you have to understand how to solve it. Uh, and you need to know, uh, you know, uh, uh, the overall uh, piece around, okay, how do, how do we deploy it and how do we uh, look at those things, right? How do we actually make the user want to use this product, right? So those things are very similar in the B2C and B2B space, right? You still want the adoption from the users. But what's different is in the B2B world, there are a few different things that are, uh, are very different. Right. So the first piece is around reliability, performance, and training. So if you want the users to adopt, and adoption is key for any enterprise, uh, you don't want your software to become shelfware. You don't want it to be sitting out there and nobody is using it, right? Because at the end of the day, if nobody uses it, they don't renew their license, and you're not going to get anything. And these users are users are not necessarily always going to be tech savvy or are not looking to um, adopt this because they love the product. They're, they're looking to adopt it because the enterprise has told them that they need to actually take this product on, right? So you, you have to have to make it easy for them to adopt it, which is where the reliability and the performance and the training comes in. The second piece is uh, you have to look at process variations. A lot of these large companies have uh, very uh, different processes for different things, right? So say, for example, you're looking at one bank the way they do accounting might be very different from how a second bank does it, right? There might be some regulatory pieces that are exactly the same, but how they operate is going to be vastly different. And you need to actually build for those pieces. Uh, so when you sell to one bank versus another bank, you're still able to accommodate all their pieces uh, within your product, right? And then the last piece is, you know, uh, around scalability and security, uh, security and auditability. So this is the third piece around why uh, you know, B2B uh, piece is different because your regular B2C consumers are not expecting to see this, right? Uh, but a large enterprise will always want uh, to be able to handle large uh, amounts of data, be able to securely do it and make it auditable. So when you have, you're looking at uh, third party people uh, coming in to do audits on your uh, SOX compliance or those kind of things, uh, 
you know uh, they need this this level of uh, 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 auditability within the architecture itself so these are kind of the the three big pieces so we have to look at uh, you know the reliability piece uh, uh, building it for adoption building it for scale and building it for scope so so those are the three kind of themes that I'll talk about today right so how do you make it easy for the user to adopt it right uh, you need to make sure that there is ample training for the user you need to make this uh, the app uh, intuitive enough for the user to take on so as an example uh, this is one of my actual users in the field i was out with them in 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 texas somewhere and he's trying to take a reading in the middle of the desert on an iphone app that we created for him and uh, the thing with him is you know uh, uh, you know, he is used to how an iPhone works, but he doesn't really necessarily know a whole lot of technology. Uh, so previously, before this, they had they were carrying around a laptop in the field, in a truck, and then they were entering data there. So what we did was we actually went out there, we sat with them and said, okay, let's figure out what your process looks like. Let's see how we can help you make it better and how we can uh, help you adopt a new technology. So we actually went and sat with him, looked through his entire process, saw how much we could help him and and actually helped him save about two hours a day uh, in the field. So that not only is he having to do less, uh, you know, data entry and all of those kind of things, but he's also having to, uh, he's saving a company a lot of time and a lot of money from that perspective. So definitely, uh, if you're building something for adoption, you have to make sure that it's intuitive, it's easy for them to be uh, trained on, and it's easy to roll out to them, right? So that's the first piece you have to build for adoption. The second piece is build for scope. So there are a lot of adjacent processes. So I spoke about uh, process variations, right? So say for example, you have, uh, you're solving one specific issue with your product, but as you discover, uh, there might be adjacent issues that you need to resolve, right? So when we talked about the um, accounting piece for a bank, right? Uh, there is, uh, you could solve, for example, their workflow around how accounting happens. But you can also look at, okay, what, who uses that data, right? How do I build analytics on top of that data? Uh, so those pieces are adjacent pieces that you can actually build around. You can increase your uh, user base and you can increase, you know, how much license uh, you're getting from that. So you always have to build uh, for scope. So you have to make the architecture loosely coupled um, so that you can actually build more things around it uh, as, as, as the years progress and, and you can penetrate deeper into the, the customer base. So as an example for this, uh, you know, uh, we built uh, the software that I just showed you right on the app where it was uh, really around uh, data gathering in the field and they were doing that and then we realized they also need task management, right? They need to be able to do tasks and they need to be able to uh, go out there and actually uh, figure out what is the list of things that they need to do in a daily on a daily basis and not just enter data and give them that ability to, to do that. So we were able to tack on that piece and build that piece out entirely com uh, new. And that actually pretty much doubled our time, right? It improved uh, uh, the overall experience for the user but and the enterprise, but at the same time, it increased our time significantly because now we had a new base of users that we could uh, sell to. And since this was a loosely architected uh, piece, we could actually tack on more pieces on top of it and make it uh, more widely available. So that's the, the second piece. The last piece that I have really uh, is around, you know, how do you get uh, uh, to, to scale? So a lot of, uh, you know, in the B2C uh, environment, you're looking at millions and millions of users generating millions of rows of data on a daily basis. On the B2B side, just a thousand users could be generating a million rows a day. So, uh, for example, for the product that I work on, um, we have uh, about 1,000 to 1,500 users, and we're looking at um, a, approximately a million rows a day uh, coming into our systems, and how do we build that to scale? Uh, a SQL Server kind of uh, environment might not work. So you actually have to think through um, how you're going to scale up to different organizations and different enterprises uh, as you actually bring your product together and help your uh, engineering team architect it, right? 
So you always have to think through that scale piece as well. So yeah, so uh, like I was saying, I mean, uh, talking about scale, uh, just making sure that you know you're able to build something that that will scale out, uh, or you know, in in our case, you know, we did we built something that scaled to a certain extent, and once it got to that point uh, or close to that point, we started building out the next uh, level of scale on that. So yeah, so uh, the way to kind of solve for this really, um, I have I've a lot of words here, but uh, I think I've said most of these things anyway, but uh, building for adoption, you have to think about, okay, the entire rollout process in terms of how do you make the end user want to use your product. So you have to think about, like I said, training, you have to think about intuitiveness of the product, you have to think about deployment uh, and rollouts because, uh, you know, um, uh, customers uh, typically won't take, especially enterprise customers, and if it's a critical piece of um, software, they won't necessarily take um, deployments every week or every month or every year. And it's not like you can just release it on an app store and it'll go, right? They typically have internal processes and internal IT that will uh, uh, that they'll have to go through and the processes that we have to go through for that, de those deployments, even if you're doing it uh, on mass or on, on in SaaS, right? Uh, the second piece around, like I said, for build of, uh, building uh, on scope, uh, make sure the, the architecture, when, when the uh, enterprise architects are putting this architecture together, they're thinking through about how do we, uh, you know, make it easy for APIs to access it, access it or build uh, different modules that can be uh, repurposed or reused in different uh, places. So as you build your platform out, you can use uh, like engines or formal engines or mathematical engines across the board and not have to rebuild those things over and over again. Um, and then the last thing is around uh, scaling. Uh, as I said, you know, you want to make sure uh, that you don't have any performance issues uh, for the most part, right? Uh, any shutdown is critical, um, especially if you're in accounting software and you're trying to do a month end piece of thing, um, then you, you get uh, hauled up and nobody wants to use you again. So you just have to make sure that uh, you, you're building for that level of scale. And just uh, one more thing, right? Uh, at the end of the day, the idea is to sell the software, right? So you have to make sure that um, you're thinking about who your buyers are, who your influencers are, and who your users are. Uh, there could be completely three different kind of folk, uh, folks in the uh, in the company that are doing those three different things, right? Uh, so you have to make sure you know who those are, and you have to always keep in mind that the ROI of the company that you're uh, building uh, the platform and the software for is kept in mind, right? So you always want to make sure that you're, you're able to sell your software.